It's the last one out of the six pack. Honest to God, her the nicest joke. She could eat pure chocolate in mouth on yourself. Mommy just ate me. You're eating literal baby food, Casey. Are you a baby? Fucking hate being called a baby. Get pure ticket or call me a baby. Let roars out me. Daddy says you'll get in big trouble for that big mouth one of these days. That's where he's very wrong. Those days are past. I have gotten in trouble for me big mouth. Past tense, but I'm working on it. I'm trying to be more quieter. I've had slaps thrown at me over me big mouth. I've been sent out of class, thrown out of Tesco a couple of times. Only at Christmas when they have the fake Santi in. I think that's it, I just hate lies. Fake Santi, big fucking lie through your hole. Can't stand it. See, I'm a straight out person, I say it how it is. You don't like that. What can I do then? I am trying to change it though. Head down, get to leaving, get work. Hi, Casey. Hi, what's the story? Hi. All right. What the fuck is he doing up here? Weirdo. Anyway, I was saying, yeah, head down, get to leaving, get work. See, I took it a bit too far last year, that's why I'm. <laughs> we had a new teacher in school, young fellow, well, 30 around, from Kilkenny, Poshkund. Hello, lads, my name is Mr. Duggan. I will be taking you for geography until the end of the year while Mrs. Walsh is on maternity leave. Big rehearsed introduction. All the girls sweating out their ditties over them, and I mean to say the chap was only all right looking. All I'm thinking is, how the fuck is Mrs. Walsh pregnant? I couldn't imagine someone writing her, lads. Anyway, so everyone pure bent up over this new teacher fella. And I just thought, if everyone's going to say it behind his back, I might as well say it straight out to him. Everyone thinks you're a big ride star. We're swimming here, says so. The girls used to get a good laugh out of it. Then I'd be encouraged more. Sir never took it serious anyway, I thought. He never... I don't know. We were going out for one of the boys' birthdays and we went to the foundry and I was incapable of standing. I was after drinking a shoulder vodka and three cans of Copperberg and I was sitting up there at the stools beside the value bar. The girls were out dancing. Who do I see at the value bar only, sir? Right? Oh, me there, Swain, not a bit able. Faith can scare with. Pull myself together a little bit anyway and down he comes and he goes to me, Casey, okay, so you're a bit young to be in here. Yeah, yeah, he says, chatting away anyway, tells me he knows my cousin Jonathan, says he used to play football with him. All right, yeah, he says, he goes to me, I know your ma to see, she's a milf. What? Freak, I says, go away, you. He goes, oh, sure, she's a bit too old for me. Yeah, a bit. And he goes, does that mean you're the right age for me? Oh, God. Dunno, he says, does it? This goes on anyway, back and forth. Next thing, we're out the door of the foundry to get a kebab, right? So we're walking down to Milano's and the line is massive and he goes to me, oh, we may get away from here. I don't want to get caught with you. I remember thinking, what? Caught what? I just want a kebab. I'm starving so I am. You know the way you be after a night out? Grand anyway, he goes to me, where do you live? I'll walk you home. Up to the road, I tell him. Grand, walking home anyway, still swaying. The next thing we're turned up towards the railway station there. I'm like, no, sir, I'm straight on up. He goes, oh, we'll do a lap at the town. Sober you up. You don't want to be going home in a state like that, right? So the next thing we're turned into dimpness, to the green there. The rest is just... So we say nothing. The next week is just questions about where I went from the girls. Keep quiet though. And I was just pure sore and uncomfortable all week. I think it's like meant to be uh, like that after your first time though. All ends up coming out then, tweets up or else just people talking, you know the way. Uh, someone might have just probably seen us walking and thought, obviously. Mr. Duggan likes some young, always saw Casey was just a Mickey tease, things like that being said. The next thing I can call into the principal's office to be interrogated, saying nothing though. No. Did you? No. Did he? No. Did you? No. The principal didn't need much convincing. You couldn't say nothing, you'd be made a show of. I kept saying to myself, Casey, keep, keep quiet, don't react, don't react. And I was keeping quiet enough until one of my own friends started saying stuff. Saying, you're nothing but a liar and the town is starting to realise what you're really like and all this. Imagine that, like, oh, I laid into her, the abuse that came out of my mouth. Hit her, slap and all, that wouldn't be like me, no, I have to say. What do I do then? Get myself suspended for physical violence and verbal abuse. <laughs> Big mouth strikes again. Didn't want to go back to school, fucked them, I thought. Only for me poor mother's heart was broke. I wouldn't have went back. Oh, sir, stay quiet anyway. Didn't hear from him, obviously. Left as soon as there was accusations being thrown, got the easy way out. Works up in Finglas now, I think.
stay quiet, stay quiet. I'm telling you, quiet people get away with murder. So, gonna try to be a bit more like them. <laughs> 